everyone, and welcome to this episode in our podcast series of Getting to Better Together, hosted by the Centre for International Development, Social Entrepreneurship and Leadership at the University of the Sunshine Coast, SIDSL, as we are better known. I would also like to acknowledge and thank Noosa FM Radio 101.3 for also being a supporter and sharing our podcasts. I'm your host, Richard Borden. And before proceeding any further, I wish to acknowledge the Gubby Gubby people as the traditional custodians of this land and pay my respects to their leaders, past, present and emerging. This is really the second session in uh, an episode that we are recording to celebrate Harmony Week. And in uh, the first session, we explored the whole notion of multiculturalism and what that meant, not from the, the position of saying multiculturalism is simply the tolerance of lots of different cultures all at the same time, but of actually asking ourselves, what can we learn from other cultures so that ours can continue to evolve, continue to develop? In America, they used to talk about America as the melting pot. The metaphor being that people would come from everywhere, but in the end would assimilate. In the end, they would all be the same. They would all be Americans holding to a set of American values, uh, which, as Americans hold, they are exceptional. And so there was a notion of exceptionalism, and that we got to exceptionalism by accepting a particular set of values, and they came out of a melting pot. One of the things we argued uh, also in that first session was the notion of seeing Harmony Week as something different, uh, of not seeing it just as a celebration of where we've got to and, and aren't we good that we've been able to tolerate uh, all these different immigrations from all over the world, but the notion of saying, well, perhaps it should better be regarded as a week of reflection rather than just a week of celebration. Celebration suggests we've got there, as I said in the earlier session. Reflection says, well, maybe we could get to better by being together. What if we listen to other people? What if we actually invited uh, through this week people to state what it is that they either find different about this particular culture when they come from el from elsewhere, what it is they've enjoyed about being here, what it is it may well be some constraining factor. And in essence, at the end, really, how could this be a better place, even better place, one might say. The day was inaugurated, that's the 21st, Monday was in, inaugurated in 1999 uh, as a day of celebration. And since then, tens of thousands of uh, events have been held, as we've said before, in schools. But by and large, I would argue the vast majority of those have been non-reflective. They've just been celebrations of what are relatively superficial cultural aspects, whether it's dance, whether it's singing, diet, food, and so on, without really asking the questions, what do those material outcomes reflect? What beliefs and assumptions do we hold that allow those to be expressions? I mean, I think about the word harmony. For me, harmony is a chord, which means different notes coming together to make a pleasant sound. If all the notes were the same, it wouldn't be a chord. If all the notes were too close to each other in Western music, it would be discordant. It would be inharmonious, non-harmonious. So the, notion that the, the metaphor of harmony for me is a really good one. It's that differences make the difference. And the differences together make what it is that we want to refer to as the desired whole. So I'm going to start, as I did with the first session, by asking uh, my two guests, who will introduce themselves and talk about where they come from, by asking, what is it they most miss from their own cultures? Now they're here, when they first arrived, perhaps, what did they first miss now after a number of years? What is it they still miss? Hi everyone, my name is Sophie. I'm uh, from Iran. Uh, my husband and I immigrated in 2015 as um, 
skilled migrant here and uh, we brought our son together you know, here as well. I read before that immigration is the second most painful experience that everyone can have and I really felt that when I wanted to leave my country. It was like I left some part of my heart, my soul behind and come here. The most thing that concerned me um, now and then, I believe that I made a good decision to bring my children here and raise them here, but the issue for me is how I can maintain and transfer those rich culture and history to my children. And I, I get this feeling um, more and more that they are going to miss that and I'm not able to transfer that to them. Hi, so I'm Taskin. I come from Mauritius, a small island in the Indian Ocean. So today I'm exactly two years that I came to Australia. Uh, so my husband came previously to study. He's done a certificate in carpentry. And then three years after that, I joined uh, with my kids. Uh, I don't so I have two sons that we came together. Uh, so we came here for the kids, for the education, and then for ourselves, for the good health services that you have here that we don't have in our country. Uh, and also, we live in a multicultural society back in Mauritius. So when I came here, we do feel there are lots of different cultures. But I did miss the warmth of the people. Like how it is in my country, we're all living together and uh, finding our way together. Is there a deliberate focus in Mauritius on being together? recognizing that you are all very different, that you're immigrants from, from all over the place. Yes. Uh, you were telling me earlier that your own heritage is Indian, for instance. Yeah, like my ancestors came from India. And so, like, Mauritius, like, almost all of us, all the, our ancestors, they are basically immigrants. Mm -hmm. We have uh, the Mauritian Creoles, we have the Indian people, we have Chinese people. So, like... The, like my ancestors came in Mauritius, they were as slaves, they were working in plantation fields. You have the Chinese people came for trade, they opened shops and, uh, and everything in Mauritius. And then you had the French and the British that set up companies. So that's how the, the country, the island uh, started. But like we all live together, so it's something like for example, if there's a wedding, you will find the everyone will come and help. Be if I'm from any culture or anything, we're all together doing something together. So, you, like you feel you're part of something. Is there a, a sense within the nation that every so often one needs to you need to reflect on on where you're going, what it's about, what does it mean to be a Mauritian? There are those sort of public conversations. Uh, you know, so we have different cultures, and then it is also based on everyone has a religious belief. It's something that's very tangible, very sens sensitive. Mm -hmm. So it's like you have to keep this flame. It's like a flame. But it's often politicians, they try to interfere. And so it's like a thread. It's like if you don't keep it, it may go in racial conflict. You know what I mean? Mm. So it's something like very, uh, something that should be kept. Like shouldn't be politician like trying to have fights between the different cultures. We should be considered as a one. Mm. You know, we all have our different cultures, but at the end of the day, we are Mauritians. Yeah. That's wonderful. Just, uh, just looking at the two of you now and, re and recognizing the huge differences between your two countries. Uh, Mauritius is a little island with just over a million people. Yeah. Iran, a huge country that's uh, almost monocultural, isn't it? Correct, yes. That I you, that. you, way, way, way back, 500, 600 years ago, um, you had invasions, as it were. Yeah. But since then, you've been 
Iranians. One of the interesting things I found when I was there is that some people say I'm not Iranian, I'm a Persian. Yes. Where do you fit on that spectrum? Are you a Persian or an Iranian? Oh, uh, I don't mind. I I can use both. Um, you know, both words. I think that's because they want to refer to. I think um, the ancient old um, empire. Maybe I don't know. And sometimes it's because uh, when you say I'm from Iran, they don't know where is Iran exactly. They confuse it with Iraq. But uh, everyone maybe in the world knows about Persian rugs, Persian cats, and some sort of things. So that's people refer to it. That's why people refer to that, mm. word, I think, mm. I believe. Yeah, I mean, I, to me, the sense of history was incredibly profound when I was traveling around in, in Iran. Yeah. Um, that whether people call themselves <laughs> Persians or, or, or Iranians, there was a, an enormous pride in what that country had achieved over all of those years. And your, your earlier comments were interesting to me from that perspective. Mauritius is a, a country of immigrants, a country of genuinely multicultural, yeah. where, as you say, people are working at it, say, this, this is, you know, that, and, and you made yourself a lovely comment about Iran, that, that your heart, part of your heart is still there, and that um, your children will probably never have that. Um, and so the sense of, of, on the one hand, we have this little place with a deliberate focus on, on multiculturalism, and the other one, almost a deliberate focus on the opposite, of saying, well, we're monocultural, and you have a single religion, of course. The dominant religion, yes, yeah, we do have, but we have, we do have, uh, like, Jewish and Christian people, Baha'i people, and other religion as well, our ancient religion as well. Mm. Yeah, but the major popularity are Muslims. And it's one beyond that. It's also the government, isn't it? It's a yes, theocratic yeah, government. Yes, the government is behind all of that. The forcing, the forcing the, the Islam to be the, the major part of everyone's, even everyday life. And do you mind if I ask you what religion you are? Um, I'm I'm officially Muslim. Uh -huh. yeah, we can't change that. Uh, when you born, <laughs> when you born there, right. you cannot change your yeah your religion. So. Have you found a constraining factor if you actually mention the fact that you are Muslim? To be honest, I haven't been asked if I'm Muslim or not because okay. I'm not wearing hijab. No, and you can you cannot tell. No. Um, but some people who know where I'm from know about Middle East. Mm -hmm. They sometimes ask me, but I believe those people, no, they didn't judge me. By that's good. I mean, yeah. mm, that's, that's good news, isn't it? Mm. Yes. I think that's because I I don't practice Islam. I, I don't represent that in okay. my... Yeah. Right. Maybe if I was different, that yeah. was different too. Yes. Well, I think there's certainly evidence in Australia that we are... There are pockets of Australians who are intolerant of, of Islam simply because they are. You know. I like to add something. So I'm Muslim as well. Okay. And I've been faced, like not myself and my husband, with people not really understanding uh, what it means. Like they are influenced by the media mm -hmm. and whatever is going right. on worldwide. So he did have some racist uh, comments and like some bullying at work. Really? Yeah. At work. Wow. But I believe it's like if people just took the time to learn about others' culture, they wouldn't believe everything that's in the media. Like they would understand the person first. Because like every religion, uh, Muslim is as well, we teach the same values like helping others, being uh, empathic and uh, giving to others. And you know what? So it's a peaceful, like everyone teaches peace, uh, things like that. So it's just uh, learning about the others, uh, the other person's culture. And that's precisely the point, isn't it? Yeah. So yes. if we had Harmony Week as Reflection Week rather than Harmony Week, yeah. uh, we would then people would then rather than just saying, "Aren't we good? We've got there," would be to say, "Well, let's listen. Let's listen. Actually, yes. listen to you." And um, I had many years ago two of. Uh, my most successful in life uh, PhD graduates were both Iranian and both of them were extraordinarily proud of their, their Islam heritage and as a listener 
and I, you know, I, I believe I'm a reasonably good listener, listener, they would explain to me that Islam is actually a radical revolutionary religion that says freedom. We're actually looking for a better way all the time. So it's not static. It's a much more, it, it's a much more uh, evolutionary religion than people give it credit for. And like any religion, it has a small group or a group somewhere or another, which is radical enough to misinterpret it yeah. in the name of whatever. Uh, and almost that, that whatever is violence. And to me, that's the absolute tragedy of wherever you go. Yeah. Um, you know, whether you want to, as the Americans say, you know, communists are red under the bed. The communists are people uh, who happen to believe in certain, I mean, a genuine communist, I mean, not someone who happens to come from a communist state, but people who believe in communalism, mm -hmm. people who believe in, in genuine social democracy, uh, where society itself is itself, as it were, and not run by somebody, either a theocrat or an autocrat or, uh, or, or whatever. So, I mean, exactly, you've just summed it up. The message for me is that if only we would reflect, if only we would listen, if we would say, can you tell me what it is from your culture that would add further now, not to my culture, but to our culture? We're all mm -hmm. in this together. Your professionals, have you been recognised for your profession? Do you, are you sort of accepted as people who are not just foreigners, but people who come with talent and attributes to this country and therefore welcomed on that behalf, not just because you're people? When we come to a new country, like I come from an island, the first year that I came, I had the culture shock. It was like everything is new. It's not the same working culture as in my country. So the software is not the same. There's a gap, like there's a, a bridge to cross. We think that if we had this support, like, like here now we're following this course, which is helping us to improve our skills and everything, that would be, like, we would be further equipped to go in the workforce. Mm -hmm. So, because in English is the first barrier, the slang, understanding the different in types of English here, so that's another barrier. And then you you come into a new country, you don't feel the, you don't have this trust, this confidence in you, because you knew you're learning. So I think having those support uh, institutions would help us. Mm. That's good. To me, there were a complicated situation. At first, my visa type didn't let me to go to the society, so I had to step back and wait for a while. After that, um, um, my qualification has been... Um, recognized and accepted by the Australian government when I wanted to immigrate here. Uh, but when I go for a job or I, I apply for a job and I mention my qualifications, I realize that sometimes people don't know where are you from. Whatever you did in the past, it's not important. They cannot count on that one. You need to work here and show them that you can work and um, so, no, I I really have a good background, which I, yet I haven't been able to use. That's sad. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Yes. I have to say that one of the, um, the privileges of my life, immense privileges of my life, has been for one reason or another, through sheer luck, I suspect, rather than any talent, that I've been able to work in, in so many different countries in the world. Yeah. And I have to say that if there is one word to describe it all, it's humbling. It's that when I go to, to other cultures, particularly being an Englishman brought up with the notion of the British Empire and then therefore the genuine superiority of everything British, to actually then confront the fact that the vast majority of places in the world, like Mauritius, that what one stage or another was British, uh, was brutish. That it was the, the sort of a, a lack of listening, a lack of empathy, just the notion of colonization, uh, of saying, well, you know, we, we, we do it my way and that's it. And I have to say that one of the reasons why I have uh, enjoyed not just traveling to other nations, but also living in this one now for um, close to 60 years, the majority part of my life, is that I find this an extraordinarily tolerant country. 
but I also find it frozen in terms of, of culture. Yeah. Uh, and my conversations with now the four of you, uh, and as I say with all the travelling that I've done, suggests that we really there, there are things that we can do and should do better. And therefore, I, I genuinely believe, as I said in the earlier session in this episode, that we should spend this week reflecting on what it is we could do. We should listen to, to you as we have been this morning, listening to what it is that you believe you can add, not as a whinge, not as a complaint, but look, you know, we've got stuff to offer that culture should be evolving patently. And I, and I want to finish um, with, I guess, the, the most extraordinary place I've been to, and I haven't been to Mauritius, but I've been to South Africa, and I've spent a, a fair bit of time in South Africa, uh, where there is an absolute deliberate attempt to create a rainbow nation, as Mandela called it, which was to say, what do all we different people, and my goodness me, there are some differences in South Africa, coming together in terms of creating a new nation, the new South Africa, where people from these extraordinary ranges, people who have been been subjected to some awful things in the last 30 or 40 years, now emerging saying, well, how can we create a new culture, a genuine multi-culture, which just isn't a tolerance and acceptance of the fact that I happen to be a Zulu or a Hausa, uh, or uh, a, an Afrikaans or an English speaking or Pakistan or Indian or whatever. It's a matter now genuinely of saying, first up, uh, as you both have said, you know, that if I say to you, what are you? You're Mauritian, you're Iranian, I'm British still. But we're contributing to and being accepted more or less by Australia, but we could be better. Thank you so much for sharing with me your, your ideas. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for your time. And um, I thank you all for listening, and I look forward to our next episode. Thank you very much, and goodbye.